Um, here we are tonight at the Grove with the monsoons and the mudslides. The day before, um, was it the day before? Yes. Yesterday we were in San Diego, which is like beautiful for me because yes. I can be home in my own bed in about five minutes, which is a luxury if you know you know what we do of for course. for a living. Travel, travel, travel. Hotel, hotel, hotel. And then the night, the day before that, we were at the Wilton in LA mm -hmm. on the 4:05 on a Friday night in rush hour. Which normally when I come to work in Burbank, I can get from door to studio in two hours, six and a half hours oh to get from San Diego <laughs> to the Wilton. Well, do you know what the 405 stands for? What is that? No, I don't know what it is. Four it's or five hours. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, that makes absolute sense now. <laughs> but um, these are the, um, these are like the backstage stories, you know. The, the most important thing is that we go on stage on time because right. I'm, I'm kind of a... I'm kind of OCD for timing things, you know, for performances. And that's I'll, that's I'll kind like, of rare in a leading not, man. It's not rock and roll, is it really? I mean, rock and roll is a notorious, will notoriously tell you, dude, I do this because I didn't want a nine to five job, you know? Right. Um, well, Axel uh, Rose could probably learn something from you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I love Axel. He's a real star. But, uh, you know, that's that's just one of my one of my little quirks as a as a performer. I have to be on stage. Well, I'm, I'm sure your audience appreciates it, especially the ones that have to work in the morning. Yeah, that's true. And and as ever, you know, I say thank you, and I'm very, very grateful for the fans giving me this life. You know, it's much like radio. We, you, you guys have your listeners, and we, we, we depend on these fans to, to let us do the things that we love to do. You know, and. My fans have been giving me this opportunity for nearly 40 years now, and I never forget them. I'm always grateful for everybody that comes to a show or buys a CD or a T-shirt, because it all goes back in the pot and keeps it going, you know. So, um, yeah, thanks for all those great things you do for us. Well, we appreciate it. We definitely appreciate everything that you've given to rock and roll and to metal, and which I was, I, you know, was a metal head and still am and still very much into rock and roll. And so we appreciate everything that you've given us over the years. And I have to tell you a quick story. Mm -hmm. My husband and I met in the orchestra pit of a Judas Priest concert. No. Yeah. That's, that's, that's we met amazing. watching you. Is that, see, that's amazing. And, um, that's that's what makes the relationship that I think that that is created with uh, rock and roll bands around the world and the fans. It unifies people. It really does. Yeah, because firstly, the connection I believe is made because you listen to the music and you listen to the messages in the music and you relate to them. Mm -hmm. That's what music is all about. You know, that's where we find our favorite performer. So that that's even more. Um, that's even more like a family, isn't it? When you mm -hmm. when you're related in a in a in a deeper sense that way. Well, speaking of relating and and this new album made of metal, uh -huh. you put a lot of personal yeah experiences or personal right. feelings into it. Mm -hmm. um, what what were you thinking when you were writing this album? What were you thinking about? Well, it was a it was it was kind of a surprise record because um, I knew I had this year to to do a lot of work. And my first thought was, okay, the Halford Band is going to go back out for the first time in a long time. And when I go and see a band, I love to hear the music that I'm familiar with, but I'm also excited to hear some of the new ideas. So, with that in mind, it was a mad scramble. I called Roy, uh, Roy Z, who plays guitar in the Halford Band and produces all of the, the music that we make. I said, Roy, let's make a record. And he goes, okay, Metal God, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I'd already been accumulating some ideas. And I played him to Roy, and he's, he said, "You should keep, you should keep going this way." I said, "Do you think we should start collaborating?" He said, "Not, not just yet. Just keep, keep on the track that you're on, because I think this is, I think this is some important things you, you you're talking about in your lyrics." So, um, I suppose because because I didn't have too much time to think it through, mm -hmm. it's coming from a different place this time, you know, which I think is, is. Um, is a good thing because uh, again I find that the opportunities that I have with my solo career I can be a little bit more intimate mm -hmm. and talk about things that that are special to me just the observations that I have about things in life which I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about elsewhere so yeah um, 
there's there's a, there's a number of there are a number of, of songs on this release that that uh, just have a little bit of of, of a personal um, side of what makes me click and tick and uh, I've always tried to be as open as I can as a as a musician with my fans as well and so this is just another opportunity to say hey this is what this is what makes me work when I write these words. Well I found listening to the album that it took me to a lot of different places. There was some adventure there, mm -hmm. there was some optimism, yes. there was some romance. Yes. Yeah, uh, it was just a very wonderful experience. I mean musicians will tell you that sometimes making a record can be very very difficult uh, and there's nothing wrong with that because greatness can come out of a out of a real long endeavor mm -hmm. and some some other times it's, it's just like you know it's like playing you're playing with the music and you're just letting all these things happen just streaming and that's what that's what happened with this record and again I love to listen to music that that doesn't necessarily challenge me but I like to be interested by it mm -hmm. I like to hear one okay there's one song now what else have you got you know so this record goes all over the place as you point out one minute we're talking about boxing but we're not that's the heavy mo the heavyweight champion of the world is right. heavy metal then we're talking about bullfighting right. you know which was inspired by Howell Hughes on the PBS the California gold guy okay. I love that guy <laughs> he was doing a thing on the California gold rush and then um, there was something on TV on PBS I'm, I'm a big PBS nut. Um, later about Mexico and suddenly this idea of a you know, a, bull, a guy that was at the gold, California Gold Rush and <laughs> Gold ran dry, you know. There was definitely a bit of a southwestern flavor to it. Yeah, well, you know, I still I still have a great affinity with the southwest. I have a, a home still in Phoenix in Arizona, and that's where the office is for Metal God Entertainment and the label and the merchandise company are based out of. And um, so even though I do spend a bit more time in, in Southern Cal now, in, in San Diego, I'm still... I'm still a bit of a British cowboy, in <laughs> in some sense. I love that South West spirit. Yes. I love that kind of. Um, there's a special feeling, much like all different states of America have got something special to offer. And I'm a lucky guy. I've probably seen more of America than most Americans have seen in the years that I've travelled. Gotten a tour bus and I've been to every one of of the states in the United States, you know, over the past 35, 38 years. I don't even know if the president has done that. Well, I don't know, it's probably <laughs> true. Yeah, um, and it, it, it's, it's remarkable. I love America, I really do. And there are so many different people that live here from different backgrounds. Of course, it's a, it's a country made of, of immigrants, mostly mm -hmm. from Europe, but from all over now. And um, it's fascinating. And yet, and yet the world is a small place, you know. You can put a metalhead from South Cal in the room with a Japanese metalhead and somebody from Australia or Rio. All head banging together. All be head banging together. <laughs> that's just that's the wonderful global community that we've got in heavy metal music. Well, speaking of metal, you have this uh, moniker of Metal God. Yes. How do you feel about that title? Well, when the fans started to call me that, I didn't quite know what to make of it, you know. And um, at first, I didn't really think that much about it but I think the longer I've lived with it the more I feel that it's got uh, it's got a great sense of value to it you know and it makes, you me, makes me think more about my work and trying to do as the best that I can possibly do and and not disappoint people I know what it's like when you you know you work hard and you look forward to seeing a band and you go and see the band mm -hmm. and for some reason it's not not quite what you expected. I don't want to disappoint my fans. So. Well, because you're the metal god, and and you've been given that title, do you feel that the bar is raised and you have to <laughs> perform to that level every time? Well, maybe. I don't really think about it that much. Um, people actually call me that now. Hey, metal god. And I'm like, well, that's obviously me. You know, <laughs> or, or MG. Hey, MG. You know, and um, it's it's a term of affection. But I think there's some there's some strength behind it. I don't overdwell on it because that's just not my nature as a, as a guy from the West Midlands, you know, born and raised in a mm -hmm. in a very very tough working class family. My my roots of who I am as a person were instilled in me as a kid by my parents. God bless them. Well, that's why you have such a great work ethic. I think probably that's true. Yeah, I think for any of us that have that have become successful through through hard work, and it is hard work. Um, and that might seem strange because your fans come to play 
when they come to see a show it's time to let loose and get rid of the daily stress so we're a bit like a cathartic event Brilliant. for a lot of people mm -hmm. but it's for us it's work obviously and we, we want to give everybody the best possible time that they can have and so we we take our work um in a very you know good level of professionalism which is which is what it should be well it we seems have a like great a time we have a great time but you know i tend to waffle on a bit about the you know the, the seriousness of it all we we we, re we love doing what we do in the halford band this is a great bunch of guys and um we just love to get on stage and give everybody the, the